I will not show you any needles in this video. But what I will show you is how to get over your fear of needles or at least overcome the intense anxiety associated with someone who has a fear of needles. So the truth is that I used to have a terrible fear of needles myself. It caused me all kinds of problems. And I'm talking from someone who has been there, who has fainted multiple times when getting a needle, who has overcome this and who now actually gives needles. So I'm going to give you eight tips on how to reduce your anxiety when getting a needle, how to prepare for vaccination, and how to have a much more pleasant experience the next time you go for a vaccination. If you have suffered from some kind of needle anxiety or phobia yourself, let me know in the comments what has worked for you. Did you get over it? How were you able to get over it? Leaving a comment could help someone else get over their phobia as well. So the first tip that I'm going to give you is to look away. Do not look at the needle. And one thing that I always do, and most pharmacists do this, is we actually cover up the needle. When the person comes in, we usually put a tissue or something over it so it's not anxiety inducing for the patient. And I do not recommend that you watch the needle go in. I've had a few people who do this and they're okay with it, but just don't look. Try to look away and think about something that maybe you're going to do after this is over. Try to get your mind off of this, but do not look at that needle. The second tip is on breathing and relaxation. So you can try to take a few deep breaths as all of this is happening. One very good breathing exercise is called box breathing. And I outlined what box breathing is in one of my videos about masks. And so I will put the link up here for you. Box breathing is something that is evidence-based. It's used in cognitive behavioral therapy, and it's a very effective way to calm your body down and to stop the feeling of panic or anxiety when you're in a situation that makes you nervous, like getting a needle. Tip number three is find a friend. Find a family member or a friend that you know, like, and trust that can go with you to the appointment. Make sure that this person is not also fearful of needles or you'll kind of feed off of each other's anxiety. Let that person go first. You don't need to watch them, but let them go, let them come out and they will tell you, oh, it wasn't that bad, it was fine. Also, maybe make plans with this person for what you're going to do after the vaccination. Maybe you're going to go for a walk later or maybe you're going to pick up a coffee. It's good to have something to look forward to after the vaccination or blood work is done. Tip number five is I think what worked for me the best. When I had to get certified to give injections, I had to sit through a class which was an entire day long. And I remember during this class, we were sitting at a table and they actually had all of the materials for the afternoon already out. And so we had needles and cotton swabs and alcohol, rubbing alcohol, of course, sitting on the table and I was just looking at these needles while we were having this class and I thought, oh my goodness. But I do think that working in a pharmacy, having had experience with people who use needles for insulin or B12 injections, never having given them, just having seen them maybe helped me to get over my fear of needles. And I still did have anxiety at the class and seeing those needles sitting there on the table, but I do think that this type of approach is helpful. Now you can go to your pharmacy and you can get a package of even just insulin needles for just a few dollars and you can pick those up, you can bring them home, make sure that they're never close to a child or anyone that could harm themselves with them and you could just have a look at them and just even touching them, grasping them, seeing what the needle is and how it works, it could be helpful to help reduce your anxiety. Now, if you choose this option, when you pick up the needles, make sure you also ask for a sharps container from the pharmacy. A sharps container is where you can dispose needles that have been used. And when you're done with this experiment, you can just lock it up. There's a little snap cap that goes on the top and return it safely to your pharmacy so they can dispose of it. So this is actually a technique that is also used in cognitive behavioral therapy. So you're seeing the needle and you're becoming familiar with what a needle looks like 
outside of the experience of actually being in a medical facility. Now, if you're really feeling that most of your natal anxiety is gone, tip number six takes it a little bit further even. It involves going with someone to get their vaccine, watching them get the vaccine before it's actually your turn, watching videos or clips of people getting vaccinations to help you visualize what it's going to be like for you. I would not recommend this for someone who is so fearful of needles that they can barely even make an appointment or that they can barely even get through this process without fainting. It could be something that you could go through this kind of therapy with a psychologist or a counselor that is more experienced in this area before actually trying it yourself. And tip number seven involves changing your thought pattern. So instead of thinking about how much the needle is going to hurt or that something is going to go in your arm that was originally foreign and shouldn't be there, think about the effects of the vaccine. So in the case of COVID-19, you will be protected from a terrible disease. If you ever were to get a severe case of COVID-19 and ended up in the hospital, you would have to have many, many needles, blood work and different IVs. So if you think about that compared to the one or two doses that you need for a COVID-19 vaccination, that helps to put things into perspective. Often we tend to think that the pain from needles is much, much worse than it actually is. We think back to experiences in childhood that were maybe traumatizing for us, maybe when the needles were not as good or were thicker, and we think that that is going to be the situation again. Time and time again, I am so amazed by people who come in and they're very nervous and then they walk away and they say, oh wow, I didn't even feel that or did you actually do it? And this is the kind of experience that we see more and more. But when you're thinking about getting a vaccination, the type of pain that your brain makes you think about is much, much worse. Tip number eight involves a technique called applied tension. And what happens when we feel nervous or when we feel like we're about to faint is that the blood is rushing from our brain and it is causing our blood pressure to drop quickly. And this is what causes us to faint. If we tense our muscles in our legs and around our core when the injection is happening, this prevents fainting from happening as well. And this helps you to feel stronger. You don't feel as lightheaded. And this also helps you to distract yourself from the actual needle and the actual process that is going on. Last but not least, one extra tip I wanna give you is there are topical treatments that actually will numb the area temporarily and you can get those from your pharmacy. Sometimes you have to ask for them, they're behind the counter, and you could put one of those patches on your arm, say about an hour before the vaccination. So that's another option for you. I also want to assure you that pharmacists, nurses, and doctors also may have a fear of needles, and we may have been there ourselves. And I have so much empathy for people who get into my clinic, they're ready for their vaccine, and they tell me how scared they are. And if you are nervous, let your healthcare provider know, I'm really nervous, and we will do whatever we can to help make this process as seamless and as calm as it can be for you. And before you know it, it will all be over. You will have your vaccination and you can go on with the rest of your day. Thank you so much to Heart Pharmacy for sponsoring this video. Heart Pharmacy has a great email list and they will give you information on vaccinations, home care programs, and other relevant health topics. If you're interested in their newsletter, you can sign up at www.heartpharmacy.com newsletter. I really do believe that these strategies do work if you can implement even just a few of them before your vaccination. If you're finding value in these videos, don't forget to subscribe and also click on the bell icon and that will notify you of future videos. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope this has been helpful. Take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye.